Yes, my beautiful people, we are back with another tactic, this time with a 442, and I believe we have discovered an absolute beast of a roll. Yes, we are using a roll that we don't typically use. It's a 442, and it's actually based around Jose Bordelas at Valencia. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. I really hope. <laughs> so it started out as a recreation. Well, it technically is a recreation, but it's also a very broken tactic in my personal opinion, in my humble personal opinion. So in this video, we are going to analyze the tactic a little bit, look at the tactic in Football Manager. And lastly, we're going to sign off by playing a game. Also, we're going to look at the results as well, if I haven't said that. But let's get stuck in right away. Yes, welcome back. And like I said, this is a recreation. So we are going to talk a little bit about Jose Bordelas and how he sets up his 442. And then we're going to go into Football Manager just so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of what we're trying to attempt. And also, of course, this can help you create your own 442 or create your own tactic with similar, similar tactical principles. So let's talk a little bit about Jose Bordelas. Is it Jose or Jose? To be fair, I'm not really sure, but he likes to get the ball to the front end of the pitch and into wider areas. Then the team attempts to play from there. His team still play with two centre forwards that each provide different styles and could both look to maintain high pressure. And then from the goalkeeper, they will always look to get the ball into the opponent's defensive third. The target for this play is Maxi Gomez. He pulls out wide from his central position and looks to win the ball in the outside channels. Valencia will then look to surround him with players looking to win the second and third balls and then look to attack from that point. So again, that bit there is fairly key for us. They like to play narrowly. They like to play with a target man, it seems, and they like to surround that target man with bodies. In case they lose the first ball, they can win the second ball. If they lose the second ball, then they can win that third ball. The rest will compress the space and push up high as Bordelas likes his team to win the ball and play in the opposition's half. This helps when the pass into Maxi Gomez is not successful and and the opposition wins the ball. The team will be positioned higher up the pitch to press as they look to win the ball back immediately. Again, this will be key. It does look like they do like to counter press, especially higher up the pitch if they do lose that first ball. And looking more into their narrow attack, we can see how much of a trait this really is. A common trait of Valencia this season when playing a 4-4-2 system has been how narrow their attack becomes. The purpose of this is to attack the penalty area with numbers and give multiple options options from crossing positions. It can also create a central overload. It also provides Valencia with the chance to get their most attacking players closer to each other and closer to the opponent's goal. Now moving on to their defensive wingers and this part for me is the intriguing part and this is actually how we found the broken role or beast of a role in Football Manager trying to replicate their defensive winger system. The team has occasionally transitioned into a 6-3-1 or even an asymmetric metrical 5-4-1 defensive shape as the wide players are dropping into the defensive line to support the fullbacks who sit narrow. In this example, this stops Valencia from being vulnerable if Villarreal attempts to switch to play and overload the opposite side of the pitch. And this image shows how Valencia doesn't have many options to be able to progress play. Valencia have condensed play on one side and protected themselves on the other. This forces Villarreal to play the ball back into their own half of the pitch. And this is not an uncommon trait for Jose Bordelas. At times this season and throughout his time at Getafe, he would pick his fullbacks to play in the winger positions and even play centre backs to play in fullback positions, something that a lot of us football manager players have done during the offline saves. So that there wraps up the brief tactical analysis of Jose Bordelas. You can find the full article, the link will be in the description. So shout out to Total Football Analysis with that article. For now, we're going to go into Football Manager and we're actually, what should we do? Should we look at the results or create the tactic? Okay, first off, yeah, first off, we are going to look at the results brief. No, first off, we're going to create the tactic. We're going to create the tactic, look at the results briefly, very briefly, and then play that game. So let's head over to the tactical screen. Yes, 
Yes, we're at the tactic screen and now we are going to create this 442 Jose Borderlass. I called it broken because I actually do believe there's something, 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 something might be broken about this with the results that we got with Valencia or at Valencia. So for me, number one, straight away, no hesitation. We are going to be using a target forward on attack. And now this will be that Maxi Gomez role. Now his strike partner in real life has been Gonzalo Guides and we're actually going to put him in right away. And we're going to kind of use his favorite or preferred role up front which would be the advanced forward. And this actually makes sense as well to have a partnership of this target forward and advanced forward. You kind of got your big guy, small guy partnership up front. But of course, if the target forward wins flick-ons, you've already got that advanced forward moving into channels and kind of anticipating that to happen. So our strike partnership up top, ready sorted, a target forward and an advanced forward, both of them on that attacking duty. We want to keep that pressure up in the final third which is something that Jose Bordelas also likes to do. Now, when it comes to player instructions, there's none on the advanced forward, but on the target forward, as in the analysis, he does like to move into the channels. So we are going to be putting move into the channels on that target forward. Another thing that we noticed, which seems to be a very common trait for Valencia and Jose Bordelas, is how narrow their attacking shape is. So for the attacking width straight off the bat, we are going to be using narrow and for the mentality as well, again, to keep that pressure up, but also get that ball into the final first. So then we can surround players. We are going to be using an, an attacking mentality. Now, you may be surprised to hear that that is basically it for in possession. When it comes to in possession, the mentality is on attacking and the attacking width is fairly narrow. We don't need to add anything else to this now now we don't necessarily need this on narrow it doesn't need to be that strict because what we're also going to be doing is using player roles to help us play with this narrow attacking shape but for in possession we are using fairly narrow and that is literally the only instruction we're going to be using in transition when the possession has been lost i feel that is very very key to be using counter press mainly because if we do lose that first ball looking for the target forward we need to win the second if we don't win the second we need to win the third and if we don't do that we become very vulnerable to counter attacks which is something that we want to stop we want to nip that in the bud right away and we want to win the ball right after losing it especially in that attacking third when possession has been won Generally, I use counter, but we've got two tactics. So at home, when you are the stronger team, I use counter. But when I went away to Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona, even when I played some of those teams at home as well, I used hold shape. Now, what hold shape does is focus on maintaining that shape. So in our case, once we win the ball, it's going to focus on maintaining that 4-4-2 shape before then going on an attack. Lastly, and because Jose Bordelas likes to do this, we are going to be getting the ball from back to front as quick as possible so we are going to be distributing the ball to the target forward and by doing so we're going to be taking long kicks for our position and for the defensive width we are going to be using forced opposition on the outside we want a narrow shape but also we want to be very very compact in between the lines which is why for the defensive width we have gone for higher but the line of engagement stays at standard so we aren't pressing aggressively there's no high press even the trigger press surprisingly again you guys might be surprised <laughs> the trigger press is set to slightly more often it doesn't need to be any higher than this again we need to maintain that 442 shape if that goes then this team can be very very vulnerable so for the trigger press is slightly more often the defensive line is set to higher and we are using a standard line of engagement and lastly we are going to be or at least try to prevent that short goalkeeper distribution and that there wraps up the team tactics now now, or the team instructions you can see it's fairly basic we're not loaded with a bunch of instructions because to be fair it's not needed it is not needed and now we can move over to the player instructions and their roles and duties and all of that good stuff as well even though we've already done the first two
So at the back in goal, we do have a goalkeeper, just standard, nothing special here, absolutely nothing special here. But at the back, the two centre backs, we do have one central defender, someone that just plays calm, composed on the ball, where his partner is a ball playing defender, someone a little bit more expressive. He has the license to dribble with it and play those long diagonal passes or even look for a key pass into that advanced forward. Both of them though will be marking tighter. I feel this is actually a very, very good defensive instruction especially we're not necessarily very attacking we still have a very narrow shape we have little um we have little space in between the lines i feel that we can mark tight and mark special players out of the game at the back as well we do have a nice balance with a wing back on attack looking to get further forward whilst the right back will be a full back on support again where we have one a little bit more expressive getting further forward running down the byline putting crosses in to that target forward and advance forward where we have another full back on the right hand side when we are attacking high you will notice that we do have a decent rest defense because the full back isn't getting far far ahead and if we do lose the ball if they do clear it low that fullback is often in a good position to then recover the ball but also he's very decent in possession he's a nice supportive player he isn't going to be absolutely useless in attack he's still going to get further forward he's still going to support your attacks he's just not as advanced or as direct as that wing back on attack and again similar to the center backs both of them will have marked tighter as their player instruction now in midfield there's something that i did kind of miss out in the analysis i really wanted the analysis to be brief i didn't want to go into too much detail i didn't want to overdo it but something key in central midfield we are going to be using a deep line playmaker on the fan because we really need him to drop deep by him dropping deep allows the winger to cut inside and then it also allows this wing back to advance higher up the pitch as well so it's kind of a nice mechanic here you've got him dropping in deep then you got him cutting inside and then you've got him getting further forward just like that absolute beautiful movements now the deep line central midfielder's partner is of course not going to be a central midfielder on defend instead he's going to be that box to box the link between defense and attack you kind of need that energizer in midfield especially once we have this stationary role the deep line playmaker on defend he's not necessarily going to move from his position so at least with his partner he can kind of cover ground and help us in midfield help us win that midfield battle again both of their instruction is to mark tighter now because we've already done the two strikers lastly we are going to be moving into the midfield wingers and this is where the special role comes in now this is where i believe these roles or this role in particular because carlos Soler, carlos Soler here had an absolute amazing season he had an absolute amazing season playing as a right winger he played 33 he scored 20 with 15 15 assists and 10 man of the match awards so on the left hand side we are going to be using a wide midfielder yes a wide midfielder on support now i'm not sure how many of you guys have tried out a wide midfielder but for me the reason why in this system i wanted to try that wide midfielder was to try and get that defensive winger role without using the actual defensive winger because i feel this isn't necessarily what jose bordelas uses now in the analysis what they meant by defensive winger is getting back and defensive winger and football manager they actually are fairly aggressive because they try to press the opposition's fullbacks and sometimes that fullback is going to be deep meaning your winger is going to be high but with our wingers we basically wanted them to be doing midfield work not only getting up not only getting back but also putting those tackles in and helping out their fullbacks as well for the wide midfielder on the left he's still going to act like an inverted winger as some sort so he's going to be sitting more narrow but he's also going to cut inside with the ball now like i said this is key because of that dlp on defend he's going to drop deep allowing that left winger to get further forward therefore this wide midfielder needs to cut inside and allow that space or make that space for that left back he's also going to be marking tighter and he's going to be dribbling more again like a typical winger 
So that is the left midfielder on wide support now for the... Well, I say this player was broken because he's slightly different. He's a wide midfielder on attack. Now, I'm not sure if we actually compare. So my left winger was often Brian Gio, who's actually played 36. He's got six and nine assists as well, which is, isn't that bad. It's not that bad. But in comparison with Carlos Soler, I mean, there is a difference. And, and possibly the wide midfielder on attack is what is beasting out this role. And similarly, like the left midfielder, he needs to sit more narrow, cut inside and dribble more, typically like a normal winger, but also cutting inside like an inverted winger. And also he will be marking tight. And that there, literally, wraps up the tactic that is that's the tactic that is a tactic it is fairly basic generally we are countering it is fairly basic nothing special nothing too heavy there's not a lot of instructions loaded we're not pressing high as well so again it's fairly different it's kind of a mid block you're operating in a high to mid block and you aren't pressing aggressively so your players aren't just knackering out so this should work in multiple leagues and different teams it worked with valencia who are predicted to finish eighth they are predicted to finish eighth so now it's time to look at the results to see where we actually ended up and just to see the results in general So now looking at the results in a Spanish first division, technically the La Liga to us, ain't it? Valencia did finish second on 30, well, I was about to say on 38 points. We played 38 games. We won 30, the same as Barcelona, but we drew five and lost three. Barcelona drew six and only lost two. Well, one of their losses came away to us at home at the Mestalla we beat them 3-1 they also lost to Bilbao but for us we lost at home to Villarreal we lost away to Real Madrid 3-2 and to be fair we got smashed by Barcelona 3-0 so it was nice that we got our revenge Barcelona beat us first and then we beat us or we beat them in the second game the three or five draws three of them came at home a nil nil to Real Sociedad 1-1 to Real Batista and 1-1 to Real Madrid and Real Mallorca away from home nil nil and also Seville 1-1 away from home in the Spanish Cup we got knocked out in the fourth round by Getafe to be fair I do like to rotate my side so that was a heavy rotated team now more impressively looking at the goal scored Valencia with the most goals scored 99 we also had the most shots for for the shots against we come in second the fewest shots against for the pass completion ratio not in the top eight same for the average possession we aren't a possession based side tackles one not in the top eight dribbles made we come second most clean sheets we come joint second with 18 and for the fewest conceded we come in second with 26 Looking at the goal score, the top goal scorers, the number one is Gonzalo Guides with 28 and number two is Maxi Gomez with 22. So both of our strikers made it as the top two goal scorers and there is Carlos Soler, that wide midfielder on attack. He scored 20 goals. Most shots for Maxi Gomez. Guides is also on that list. Most player of the match towards Carlos Soler, no surprise. Jose Gaia is also in that list. Maxi Gomez and Gonzalo Guides. Most key passes, Jose Gaia in second place. Best pass completion, nobody there. Tackles one, nobody there. Most dribbles made, Jose Gaia coming in second. Most clean sheets, our keeper in fifth place, but I believe he got injured. Otherwise, that could have been more. And for the fewest, oh, less, sorry. And for the fewest conceded, it is our goalkeeper again with 22. Looking at the data hub, we can look at the par shape now. You can see that this is very, very narrow. This is our last game against Raul Sociedad away, which I believe we won 3-0 possibly, 4-1 even, 4-1, we won this game 4-1, it was a close game to be fair, it, yeah, the, the, the scoreline suggests that we smashed them but it was actually fairly close, looking at the attacking efficiency, we were aggressive, we were aggressive and clinical, defensively we were quiet and impenetrable, looking at the XG table as well, we were expected to finish second which is where we finished, for the XG we had the second highest XG for the expected goals against again second, so therefore the expected points we were second as well. Lastly, the squad stats, looking at the top goal scorers in all competitions, Guides with 28, Maxi Gomez with 23, Carlos Soler with 22, Marcos Andre with 11, the assist, Jose Gaia with 17, 
and Carlos Soler with 15. If you want to look at the schedules very, very quickly, you can see a 7-1 win here. 6-1 win against Mallorca. Those are some high scoring games, obviously. Raul Sociedad as well. We beat Seville. We beat 4-0. Getafe, we beat 5-1. Getafe, of course, Jose Bordelas, X team. And yeah, that's the result. You can see here we beat Levante 3-0, but then went away to Barcelona and we lost 3-0 as well. Maxi Gomez got sent off in the 41st minute, but now it's time to play that game. And guess who we're playing? Atletico Madrid. So that is a team that's going to be fairly difficult to break down. Hopefully we can break them down. Let's go. So this here is the team. Now, worryingly, Jose Guy is absolutely knackered. It's not like Carlos Soler is absolutely fit neither. But also, Gonzalo Guides, the top goal scorer, is out. He is out. So, if we do manage to break down Atletico Madrid today, even more so impressive if we do it in style. But oh, here's Jose Guy from a corner, whips it in. Lamar heads it out. Guy collects the ball again. Oh, it's a decent tackle. But Paulista collects the ball. Carlos Soler, Mariba, Paulista, Thierry. I mean, we're being a bit patient here. Patient is not our game. El Devarte. I don't like this. One of them are going to lose it. Oh, there is a fullback right there. Why do they always ignore the fullback? The goalkeeper plays it to him, though. Here's Thierry. Play it down to Salah. Salah, far post. Maxi, clockwork. Absolute clockwork. That has happened a lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Absolute clockwork. There we are. Carlos Salerno, he finds the space in between the fullback and the center back. He didn't really need to do much, but that was an absolute whoopage. Whoopage. Atletico are starting to get into the game, so I am going to demand more from the boys. It's a fairly, fairly boring game as it stands. The wing back needs to get further up. He needs to get further up. So what I'm actually going to do with that wing back now, it's go to my tactics. I'm going to try and take Mark Tighter off and see if that helps. He is a bit deep. Oh, we've got a throw in. Here's Thierry Randall, Carlos Soler. He's already got an assist. So you guys saw the whippage. Oh, just wired. We're not really going to get that many highlights against Atletico. They're probably trying to shut us down with their three. It's an ugly... Look at that. Look at that. How are they even going to attack? There we are. Jose guy cuts it out. Ref! Oh, if they score from that, that's... Oh. Oh. Oh, that's a criminal tackle, man. That's probably at the first shot. I knew it. Their first shot on target. I literally just about to say, I bet that's their first time. Oh, this game in Atletico is so typical. Man. Jose Gaia brings it forward now. Whips it. That's a silly cross. But it falls to Carlos Soler. There's an overlap. Oh. Carlos Soler plays it. He finally plays it to the fullback. He's been ignored a lot, but he whips it. It's two. It's Maxi. <laughs> The target forward has done it again. That's a brace. We deserve that. Atletico did not deserve that equaliser. It's two, two, two. It's two, one to the Valencia boys. Come on, keep this up now. Maxi, oh, I challenge that. Why is he not going for that? Well done, Ratchet. He wins the ball. Now it's Marcos Andre. Thierry. That looked a bit off. That looked a bit off. That did. Oh, no, it's free. It's free, boys. Come on. Maxi Gomez with a flick this time. He turns provider. Two goals. And now turns provider. What a man. What a guy. What a... Oh, centre back subbed. I meant centre back yellow. Jose Guy is absolutely knackered, so we're going to take him off for Tony. And Carlos Soler is knackered, so we're going to take him for the... Take him off for the former Arsenal boy, Eunice Musa. It's Maxi Gomez, Brian. He's, oh, what a ball to Musa. Are we going to score another? Musa? Oh, lucky. 
Gabriel Paulista plays it back to our oh what was the point in that and it never goes oh yes Lato I was about to say it never goes oh fools anywhere near our target forward Brian Hill Marcos Maybe I need to shush. <laughs> Maybe I need to shush. Wow. That goal looked like a well-worked goal as well. Also, hint. So they're playing the three at the back. So I've actually spread my defensive width because I noticed three at the back playing narrow, you literally give them so much space out wide. Oh, they've switched to 4 2 I mean, it's probably not going to make any difference now, but they've switched to 4 2 And that there my friends wraps up this game valencia three atletico one they only had two shots on target of course they score one of those but maxi gomez scores a double and marcos andre the backup striker helps us complete or seal the win and that there unfortunately wraps up this game i hope you guys have enjoyed oh, wraps up this video sorry i hope you guys have enjoyed it try it out a broken 442 but even if you don't try out this tactic make sure you try out that wide midfielder role it is really really intriguing i will see you guys soon on the next one take care thank you for watching shout out to all my patrons as well i'll see you guys soon stay safe peace out Bloop.